Well, students, this video is meant to go over some of the important points for the physics crash barrier lab and what to put in your lab right up. So, some basic things, names, uh, title of the lab, the purpose, which you can get from here, titles there. Uh, you need materials. So there's a list of materials down here. And we won't use all of these. We don't have Vernier software or the interface. And we will use a laptop, but that's only for your lab write-up. It's not really for the lab itself. Uh, there's a couple things that aren't on here that we did use. And so think about what those are, hint, hint, um, and add those to the materials list. Also, some other stuff to think about from this first page is, is you're going to measure two things. You measure some stuff with the accelerometer and you're going to measure the compression or how much the crash barrier squeezed. What's up, buddy? Uh, in a few minutes. I'll get you web slingers soon. No, daddy's busy. Okay. So, in the design and pretest. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. After materials, you've got your purpose. And then in your design, I said that wrong. After your materials, you have your procedure. So you have to come up with your procedure. We talked about this, or we'll talk about this in class. <clears throat> those are the steps that you could present to someone else, and then they could follow those steps to do the activity. So from brainstorming in the beginning, to drawing a design, to revising that design, to testing it, etc. Okay, so... Uh, drawing. You can take a picture of your drawing and you can upload that photo to your Google Doc. Um, your data is all online now. It's all on day... Let's see. It's all here. If we refresh this, it should all show up. <clears throat> so your data is all online there and going back to the lab so after you take a look at your data you can take a screenshot or a screen grab of your data and you can mark on there where the graph experienced the most force and then you can add that to your post measurement section what else goes in here you have to figure out these three things uh, oh, before we get there you have to compare the measurements that you took for the data table and here's the data table so before the collision the mass width length height and then volume of your crash barrier and then after and then you can put your your data here for those other things So some things you have to calculate. Force. If you know the acceleration and you know the mass of the cart, and the mass of the cart was given to you uh, on my website on days 95, 96, and maybe 94 as well, you can use those things to figure out the force. Remember the force experienced by the cart is the same as the force experienced by your crash barrier. Newton's laws tells us that. Um, and you can use either your video or you can use the data table uh, to get the time of the collision. And then the distance you can get from your video, the rulers in your video, so you can get that distance from there. So these are all things you need to put in your uh, post-test measurements and analysis. It's basically your measurements is your data. So this is your data section. And now this brings us to the end, conclusion. So there are a total of five things you have to do in the conclusion. One is answer this question. Uh, we sort of did this in your warm-up. Uh, next is answering this question. Which aspects of your crash test barrier worked well and which did not? So you have different things, different parts of your design. List them and then say whether they worked well or did not. You have to make a claim and then cite some evidence and explain your reasoning. So it goes like this, evidence, reasoning, claim. I'll give you an example from a lab that we did last semester. Last semester we did a penny drop lab where we dropped one penny, three pennies, and five pennies. And the goal was to figure out, do they all fall at the same rate or do they fall at different rates? What you should have found is that all sets of pennies fall at the same rate. 
which then proves that everything feels the same acceleration regardless of mass. We all experience a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. So evidence would have been that all my sets of pennies fell in the same amount of time. All right, that's a piece of evidence. And then explaining what that tells me is the reasoning part. So that tells me that they all experience the same gravitational pull, the same acceleration. And then a claim. A claim says, what do I know? Well, I know that gravity is the same for all objects, and that all objects are accelerated at the same rate. So that's how I can go from evidence to reasoning to claim. There are two more questions to answer. Which aspects of your design would you change? using the same materials, and why? And then, what do you think the effect of that change would be? So basically, what would you change, why would you change it, and how do you think that would affect things? So that's it. That's what you've got to do. Let me know if you have any questions.